My name is Derek Desrovina, and I'm the director of uh, Bristol School for Social Entrepreneurs and Dartington School for Social Entrepreneurs. And uh, this has been an amazing event, our first in Bristol. This is our first year here in Bristol. And to see these 17 students who develop amazingly over one year from the very early interview with us, where they just caught us the germ of their idea to seeing these projects really flourishing. It's been very humbling and very inspiring. And you were asking where we want to go next with our project. And what I'm, I'm working on now is how can we support these social entrepreneurs once they've left the program. So we're putting in place some business support that's very flexible, that can help these social enterprises get the support they need to get them over this very difficult first hurdle of the first six months, the first 12 months. I'm also involved with the Bristol and Bar Social Enterprise Network, where we're putting together a strong network for the schools. And I'm working on a social incubator project where we will take some scalable social enterprises that are ready to grow and take them through a program of learning, mentoring and investment to really scale up. Because what I want to see is that social enterprise becomes not the niche but the mainstream of business because I think that's where social enterprise is heading. This is going to be the business of the future, this is going to be the way it's done. My name's Jackie Bent and I've been on the SSE course for social entrepreneurs for the last year and my idea is to create an interactive community map that pinpoints every single um, charity, non-profit and community project across the UK, meaning that people can find the help they need when they need it, they can find places to go and volunteer when they've got free time and that they can also, projects existing already, can connect and share, meaning that they share tools, resources, strategies so that they save their running costs and they actually become more effective and lastly what it will do is it will help to encourage local businesses to support local projects and another way that we can do that is through introducing the community pledge and the community pledge is for small to medium enterprises to actually sign up to to state that they want to make a difference within their community the community pledge will be an annual membership fee and it will be a badge of honor a bit like the fair trade symbol so helping businesses to stand out from the crowd, helping them to raise awareness of what they're doing within their community, the business they are, helping them to gain new customers, loyal customers that stay with them. So altogether everything we do is about empowering individuals and strengthening communities and the course with the SSE has been absolutely incredible. It's been crucial to making connections and helping us to build a strong platform and business plan that means that it's self-sustainable. Hi, I'm Daniel Oliver, I'm Network director for Bristol and Bath Social Enterprise Network but also um, I'm a social entrepreneur in my own right so I like to have ideas and set new things up just like some of the people this evening. I work in partnership with SSE to enable Bristol and Bath Social Enterprise Network but also to work with not just Bristol but also the West of England region to look at the real clear things we can do to move social enterprise forward and work in partnership with a lot of different sectors to make that happen. So it's about really delivering real things, about making sure that we can have a shot at some of the big national opportunities, which will bring in investment or funding and co benefits or make people's lives and jobs and work easier on the ground, um, but also to deliver new projects. So to look at what we can do to support social enterprises to connect with new opportunities and particularly new kinds of themes. So if we look at social enterprise as a concept, it's a bit abstract, um, but what social enterprise does is really, really exciting. So it's able to deliver things in a way which no other kind of sector can. Well, public sector and private sector really struggle with, but also it's able to engage communities. And that may be anything from renewable energy, which involves communities and creates jobs and the opportunities for people, to producing local food, to creating new employment and jobs in communities which otherwise would be overlooked by some of the mainstream approaches um, or an increasingly contracting um, public sector budgets which you know we need to be clever about how we do new things in our communities and I think it's far more interesting the question is like how we create our own opportunity for ourselves and 
see the change that we want to be in the world rather than asking for handouts or hoping that grants will come to do new things. My name is Laura Abbey and um, I, my, the name of my organisation is called Autism Independence and it supports parents and people who have been affected by autism, whether it's children or adults from ethnic minorities. It happens that my oldest son Sad has autism and was diagnosed at the age of two and a half. And so because of my story with Saki and how he progressed and the success with him, I am here today helping other parents who I mirror my journey through them. The plan for the future is to continue supporting parents from these parents who are children with autism and people that are not that have been affected by autism. And um, I like to further my knowledge on this area of autism and hopefully study and research more about autism. So yeah, there it is for me. That's what I do. Well, I come from the world of social entrepreneurship and believe very strongly in that making a better city, contributing to a better city. So I thought tonight had a wonderful selection of young people with brilliant ideas put into practice that will make a better place. And uh, that's what social entrepreneurship is about. And uh, Bristol is fortunate in being only one of two cities in the UK that's a social enterprise city. But we've got to do a lot more of this stuff in order to justify that title and uh, I think the Social Enterprise School is exactly the right thing for Bristol and so I'm very grateful to what's happening here. Hi, I'm Jonathan May. I run SponsorCraft, which is a crowdfunding platform for educational institutions. Uh, I met Dirk um, through SSE a few years ago, um, ar around a year ago actually, when he was getting involved with uh, SSE Bristol and setting up the School for Social Entrepreneurs here. Um, and I've been inspired um, by, by the way that SSE uh, is bringing um, experience, mentoring, knowledge um, and, and expertise into the social enterprise sector uh, and teaching people how to, how to really create sustainable businesses um, as well as uh, empowering social change. So we are, we are growing a, a network of uh, philanthropic supporters for the education sector. Um, we're temporarily based in London as part of the uh, WIRA program. We're also members of Unlimited um, and we're planning on bringing back a, a much increased uh, capacity to support um, education sector projects uh, to Bristol um, in January um, when we return to, uh, to, to Bristol. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get behind education funding, uh, education fundraising and also get behind the social uh, enterprise community that's developing in Bristol. I mean, Bristol and Plymouth are now the UK's top two social enterprise cities, uh, and we're very proud to have originated here. Uh, I want to come back. Hi, I'm Daniel Baller. I'm the founder and co-director of Co-Resist. And yeah, I have to say that working through the course at the SSC has been amazing. It's been um, a really amazing container to explore the ideas that I had for the organisation and to trial different ideas, especially ideas around hierarchy and trying to break down hierarchy and working in a non-hierarchical structure and coming full circle into realizing that there are ways of conducting business where you can have forums where people can say what they want to say in a, in a non-threatening and communicative environment and act on those ideas and act on those decisions and everyone's empowered to, to work in their own, on their own fields and in their own way and that can be done in a non-hierarchical way but it has to be done in a way where everyone is their own leader and that was a really interesting journey kind of finding out more about that and the ideas of holacracy and, and doing that through the SSE and the support here has been amazing like the facilitators have been great the organization has been uh, really supportive and I think over the next couple of years what we hope to do is do uh, a few more productions which are going to really kind of like build our reputation and wow our audience and start kind of working on some projects which, yeah, which bring about real change in our community. Uh, we've got some lined up with Bristol Pound and Eradicating Ecocide, and we'll see what happens. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Rosie Love. I'm Programme Manager for the School for Social Entrepreneurs here in Bristol. And today we've just witnessed an incredibly inspirational 
uh, set of entrepreneurs that are graduating uh, from the programme with their wide range of socially and environmentally responsible projects and businesses. I'm exceedingly proud. I've been completely wowed by their achievements over the last year. So these guys have shown absolute inspiration, courage and resilience and I'm proud of every single one of them. <laughs> We're just starting with our second cohort here in Bristol. This year we've got 21, uh, a few more than, than last year, and uh, the group is more diverse. We've got a 22-year-old through to a 71-year-old, and we've got uh, a much stronger gender balance and a really uh, diverse range of backgrounds. So I'm really excited about this new cohort. A lot of them are here tonight for the graduation. I think they've been totally inspired by what they've seen and a little bit scared, but, uh, but I think they're ready to go and I'm really looking forward to the next year.